It's spring and our busy season, but we finally had time to go visit a Kubota dealer. So there's three sizes, right? I mean, three physical sizes. Three physical sizes. There's the small 3560, which is kind of by itself. And then they have the 4060 and the 4760 are the same frame, but they run a different loader. You get the medium size 805 loader on the 4060 and you get the big 1055 loader on the 4760. And I think that's the reason why most people go with the 4760 over the 4060 is they get that heavier lift load. And then you jump up to the big one. So we don't want the big one. Uh-uh. We think we want either the 35 or the 47. That, okay, the 4, 35 or the 47. Okay. Yeah. 47s are really hard to get. I've got three on back order right now. So you don't have any? I don't have a 4760. I got one. Yes. Christy, I'm really impressed so far with just all the equipment they've got here. And I mean, there's so much activity here in this dealership. My biggest problem is having 3060s built. I delivered a 4060 the other day. I delivered a 4060 cab the other day. We delivered a 3560 yesterday. So I'm a little short on L's built. <laughs> I do have cab ones built. You want to look at open end cab? Okay. Yeah. yeah, this is an open station 4060. And tire size will be the same between a 4060 and a 4760. The difference is 4060s run a six bolt rim. Okay. 4760s run an eight bolt rim. Okay. So they have a little bit sturdier, heavier gut inside the wheel, which I kind of like. Telescoping draft links on this tractor. So it's easy to get stuff hooked up. Nice, comfortable tractor. This is the Cadillac compact tractor. It's really the premium. It's one, the it? premium compact tractor. There is not a better compact built anywhere. I don't care who makes it. Very comfortable operator station. Your loader lever's right there. It's all pre-wired for uh, front hydraulics, so you can use anything on the front, grapple buckets, any kind of any right. kind of so you've got front three, applement. The third function is you already... can put a third function on it if you want. That's an option. Okay. It's like buying a car; you can get any option you want. Okay. <laughs> There's favorability for three controls out the back, so you can do hydraulics mm -hmm. out the back. Uh, a lot of people that do use these commercially for um, Construction, I do a three valve hydraulic system in the back and put tip and tilt hydraulics on it. So you that do sell you can... a lot of top and tilt? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. About, I'd say one out of every four commercial units go out with tip and tilt on. Yep. Okay. Yep. Is this an air seat? No, it is not an air seat. It looks like one and it's got basically the same bottom in it. It's just a manual adjustable rather than an air. So it's, okay. uh, you can get an air seat. That is an available option for it, either in the open or the cab. Air seats are, I think, a necessary option if you're using a lot of different operators because you can adjust from one operator to the other. Like if both of you are using it, you might want one because he's you know, a little bit heavier than you are and you're going hey, to be adjusting seats all the time. Hear what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> so with an air ride, you can just hit a button, toggle it back okay, and forth so and adjust well, on it. On this one, you have to. You just have to adjust it in. Yep. Okay. And what you set it at is you get up in the seat and give it a bounce but you don't want to bottom out uh -oh. so you're bottoming out so what you want to do is you want to adjust that seat up to where you don't come down and hit bottom because that's what hurts you know okay. if you can so get that need, thing set yeah we need the air seat yeah <laughs> can't see us doing this we need less donuts <laughs> Come on. No. I, I haven't had a donut yet this morning. <laughs> right. yeah. Treadle pedal. Treadle pedal. This one has six ranges on your transmission, basically. Right. You've got a high, low, medium range here, and then you've got a high and low here. This one is a shift on the fly. This one you must stop to shift. This one here, though, you can shift on the fly, and you can set it to where it will do that automatically for you. They have a stall guard feature in this, an automatic shift. You can have, have an auto throttle on this, where it auto audibly advances the throttle the so minute you hit the pedal. So with this two-speed here, this makes it so that you can be going pretty fast when you're transporting, say, a yes. load with your loader, and then, and then when you want to go into the down. pile, yes. you bop can either it down do it manually do it. or And you can actually get it, set it to where it'll do it automatically. Personally, I like to shift it on my own, but you okay. can get it to set up to where if it's tests the load, it'll automatically shift now, down. We have three ranges here. When I shift between high and low in a, in a, in a range, say I'm in the medium range, uh -huh. is, is this a smaller shift than say? Yes, it's a smaller shift than this one, but it's still a shift you can, you you can, can tell. I believe on this tractor, you can actually adjust how abruptly that shifts. Yes, with this button right here. Okay. <laughs> You've got 
your four wheel drive lock in and out here. Of course, I've got it in two wheel drive out here on the outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three point hitch levers right here. Easy to control, PTO lever there. Here's your foot throttle or hand throttle. You do yeah. so. And it does have an auto throttle in it to where yeah. you can set it. Now, if you're PTO running, if you're running your PTO on something, you don't want to use the auto throttle. You want to use the standard throttle on it. Oh, sure. Oh, that's, that's your tilt wheel. wheel. Yeah. So you can just, when you get ready to get out of the seat, you can just hit that button and it'll flip right up out of the way. Feels real quiet in the operator station. This is one of the quietest tractors I've, I've ever, I, and we used to sell deer. So, and, and this is a lot smoother tractor than the deer. This is the lowest range here. Yes. And I've sold both tractors with both this type of pedal and the other. And I'll go with this pedal every time because when you're drag boxing or you're doing grade work, you're looking backwards. Finding that pedal way up here to go in reverse or forward when you're looking that way is very difficult to do. This pedal, I can turn around and run this pedal with my other foot because I can turn around and really look backwards. And one thing that's nice about the Komodo is they offer a seat that will turn 30 degrees so you can okay. actually help you look backwards. <laughs> it don't turn very far, but it turns just enough. Just enough. You ain't spinning your neck every day. Yeah. So this now is the slowest, slowest gear. Well, you can slow oh, you can really it. creep. You can trench with it. That's this feels a little tight to me right in here uh, with all these levers. I really like that they're handy. Yeah, but they are it close. feels a little tight. Maybe, does this seat go back? Uh, yes, I believe it will. And I also, you're all the way back. You can also move the back of your seat lean forward and back where you're okay. leaning forward or back yeah. on it. It takes about 20 minutes to get the seat set right. <laughs> <laughs> Christy, you want to try this? Sure. Going down into I like the that. Yeah. The, the tilt wheel works very nicely. Yeah. yeah. Then, but overall, it feels like a very luxurious tractor. It's fine for me in here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Maybe not quite as many uh, donuts as me, that. is that what we're saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It matches your hair, Christy. Yeah. Loader probably wouldn't like what I say, but I, I don't run it like that. I put my foot right here, yeah. and when I want to back up, I put my toe underneath it and lift up. That's just, that, that's something I got used to on our old pedals, and I just got used to doing that, and that's the way I do it. Of course, I don't wear tennis shoes, I wear boots, so that that helps. Here's the independent brakes. You're on auto throttle right now. What we're going to do is, I'm going to show you a little secret. We'll take the auto throttle advance out, okay? Now your throttle will work right there it's with like your, your, your hand throttle. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> it's going to take some practice with that. Yeah. What it'll do is it'll stop the inside tire and it'll spin it. Then actually the outside tire will force you around, but you really tear up a lot of turf. It's not something you want to use when you're in somebody's yard. Yeah. <laughs> like but it will do that. It'll it'll pull it right around. Then of course you've got settings here. You can so if you're setting your you're setting your equipment up, like if you've got a bush hog or a right, rotary cutter, right. you can set that to where it'll stop and drop into the same spot every time. Now is this yeah. for your uh, this is for your SUVs? Yeah, your, rear, SUVs. your rear SVVs. What I generally do is set my top and tilt in these two, and then my third function on this back one. Okay. And, and so you can set it up any way you like, but that's the way it is. This would be your third grapple. This would be your third function grapple. There'll be a switch right here for that. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's this this will turn it on and off. Oh, I forgot. That's this throttle. has a throttle advance there. <laughs> that's that's nice. that's the one button I forgot about. What'd you think, Christy? I like it. I would get used to it. I'm. It's got more features than I know what to do with. It really does have a lot of features. Yeah. And and useful features at that. Now, what he's going to show us here is a used 4060 with a cab. This is a used tractor I just traded for. The guy that had this tractor sold his big property and bought two acres. Okay. Well, or three acres, I think. And he just didn't need it anymore. Yeah. So he ended up 
trading this off for a 2650 cab. Got a small cab. But this is a real nice one. Right? So he went with a B series. Yep. See that tree line back there in that barn? Yeah. That's all my ground. Okay. You can take that back there and run it in the grass, film whatever you want to, have well, a good time that. with it. Yeah. Take, take well, it back there and that. have some fun with it. I wish they'd make these cabs about three feet wider yeah. and put a buddy seat in this yeah. cab. This is quiet. Oh, this is nice. Yeah. Are you changing your mind on a cab? Well, this cab is really quiet. Um, it's quieter than Dad's by far. Dad's got a 3320 deer with yeah. the cab, and it's it's noisy in that cab. Let's see. Whoa! So that was the that was the shift on the go. <laughs> they got lots of tractors, I noticed, and there are lots of people been in and out of this dealership while we've been here. I'm pretty impressed with this dealership. I'm pretty impressed with the. Uh, attitude of the owner. He's got a nice playground back here. This really is a compelling machine. Look at that. Shift into four wheel drive and it pushes right in there. Wow. You know, and not only does it operate fast, it's got a huge amount of torque. Oh. You see, it really bangs hard. Is that good or bad? <laughs> Well, you know, I'm just not used to it having so much power and so much uh, speed and all. It definitely will run two functions at the same time. We've even got some spot here where we can uh, uh, see what it's like on a slope. If we turn the thing over, that probably won't be good, will it? No. You know, it doesn't take much of a slope to give you some pucker factor. Yep, I got it. I'm really amazed at how quiet this tractor is. I should say amazed, but I saw the same thing with the, um, you know, with the case mini excavator that we have. It's, it's got a Kubota engine and it's very quiet too. Are, if your brakes are separated, are they separated? Can you push just the right pedal? No. no. There's a lever down there to... Now give yourself a little throttle and you'll have to be a little gentle with this because... But push that right brake pedal and you should be able to slide those front wheels. She about ran over me. You didn't really notice much, did you? It's not really heavy enough in the back to do what, what I was saying. You should be able to, and you did, you slid that wheel, but it just kept sliding. Usually when you lock that wheel, it should slide the rest of the tractor. But with the loader on and nothing on the rear, I don't think it has enough to do that. So this is one thing I learned on that test drive. Folks have asked whether I would get wheel weights or filled tires if I got a larger tractor. Now with this experience, I'm certain I'll do both. Look at that. She can do two functions at the same time very nicely with this rig. And he said this is the smaller loader. The 4760 actually supports a much larger loader. It's hard for me to go forward with this treadle pedal, especially yeah. the way my foot feels. Albert. But I found that I, I need to push over here to go forward. Yeah, I think that's why they put that extension yeah. out there. One feature I'm not really sure about is the turning radius. It doesn't really seem to have a really tight turning radius. Take it out of four-wheel drive, pull that orange lever up. Okay, then let's uh, step over here a ways and do that again. That was the turning radius in four wheel drive. Notice not only is the turning radius fairly large, it's, uh, it also tore up the turf a good bit. So here's a very visible example of needing rear ballast, even with an empty loader. You can see that you just can't get any traction at all with just a little bit of slope there. This would be the same with any tractor of this size. It isn't Kubota specific. Down there, it's leaning to the right. It just can't get any rear traction in two-wheel drive. 
need some rear ballast even with just the loader. Well, let me try it for just a minute or two and then we'll take it back. It's a little bit hard to know what to do on a test drive. If I was driving a subcompact tractor, I'd have a lot better understanding of what capabilities I should be able to expect. I don't have as much experience with this particular size tractor, so it's hard for me to know exactly what weak spots to look for. Very nice tractor. More features than any other tractor I've been on yet. Uh, and, and useful features. The two-speed shift on the go hydrostat is very useful. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in the turning radius to be honest. The Coyote tractor we were looking at was a little bit smaller frame tractor. They've got a 40 horse tractor in a smaller frame, so it would turn a little shorter than this one. Yeah. This is a very powerful. The cab is incredibly quiet. I wonder if we should look at the 3560, uh, the smaller one. It feels quite big for, for our operations. I don't know. Yeah, it does. But I like the cab. I do too. I like it because it's so quiet. Yeah. I really like the horsepower size of this tractor. I, I just don't know that I want the physical size. You know, these hoods, they, they come up nicely. They give you good access to stuff that you really need. But on the other hand, they don't give you good access way back in here. You know, I, I feel like I'm kind of boxed in. This looks like a, an air sensor. I actually don't see any problem here. They've got covers on all of this. Yeah. It really looks like it'll be fine to me. Here's your battery. Where's the filters? Here's an oil filter. That is a fuel filter, I believe. And then this is a fuel filter here. That should be the dipstick for the oil, I would think. That's a new tractor. When you see a diesel, it's not all uh, dark black. Because it doesn't take but an hour or two to make a diesel oil turn black. What is this thing? That's the fuel tank, I believe. It may be, but the fill up is on the other side. Yeah, I believe the fuel tank looks like it goes all the way through to both sides. There's a, a big black hose across from the middle there, and it looks like it's got a protector under it, a piece of steel under it to keep uh, limbs and stuff like that from hitting it. Not quite. It would fit in the shed, though. The little <laughs> toolbox here is pretty tiny. Yeah. Lift cylinders here are exposed instead of being inside, which works fine. Uh, the extendable arms he already showed. That's nice. Uh, these work nicely, work a little better than Johnny's turnbuckles. You oh, adjust your width. Yeah, it is nice. You got several choices too, and then there's a flex choice. But you can put them all the way in, move further in than that probably, and put them way out wherever you want. Okay, it's still cold. It's not supposed to be cold in April. It's crazy. So you think this one would be more the size that you're looking? Physical size, I think this would be the right physical size. I just really wasn't wanting just 35 engine horsepower. The hoses are all right in here and then they put the disconnects way out here. I just I just don't like them way, way out here like this. They're easy to reach. Yeah. But I feel like they're also easy for brush to reach. So it's all uh, skid steer quick attach, right? Yeah. And they've got this greased up really nicely. It works well. Now this feels more like Johnny, uh, but, a, but a bigger version of Johnny. Uh, it's longer, I think, even than a 2025R, just by looking at it, noticing the length of the hood and everything. So it's probably more like a 2032 in physical size, although I believe it's narrower. 
So you're not really interested in a 2650 because it's not got quite as much more horsepower as we have. Right. And the 3350 might be some interesting, but I'm afraid it just wouldn't be big enough to achieve the goal that we're looking for either. You know, it's tough to decide on the size. It really is. I know that a lot of our viewers have the same issue. You don't want to get too big. It'll just be unhandy. At least that's the feeling. Some folks say always buy one size bigger than what you think. And, you know, I'm just not sure that I totally agree with that. We have found the handiness of Johnny to be incredibly valuable. Yes. We can get into places that some of these larger tractors we've been on just wouldn't be able to get into. Which tractor would you buy, Christy? Um, probably the bigger horsepower. I just got Christy to commit to buy it, that she would buy a bigger tractor. Yeah, you didn't see me pull out the checkbook though. <laughs> this L series is probably the most popular compact tractor that Kubota has. It's, it's the kind of more entry level features. The joysticks up here on the loader instead of being back on the tractor. Things like that, just some, just some more simplistic features. Very cost-effective tractor and very reliable tractor. I don't think that's what we're interested in. I think we want the more advanced features for what we do. Um, we don't do a, a lot of just huge projects. We a lot of times need uh, features. A lot of times we need to do something very particular uh, on our operations. So I think we need to stick with the higher end feature set. So the Grand L series for the Kubota or the SE super equipped series for Coyote or the R series for Deer, uh, that kind of thing that we've seen so far. But Christy, it's hard to make a choice when you've got all these tractors sitting here. It's a huge inventory. Absolutely. Hey, we've had a great time at the Kubota dealership today. We especially thank Doug Edwards here at Edwards Equipment for showing us around and, yeah. and, and actually just leaving us the keys and letting us uh, wander in our, on our own. Uh, you know, there's a lot of value in a salesperson sharing his information, but there's also a lot of value in the trust that he has just to let people look around and look on their own because really in the end, we have to make the decision. And of course, you guys can help us make the decision too. Well, we'll keep working on this. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with Tim. Tim. Yeah, it's almost as big as our Prius. It costs about the same, too, or more. <laughs> probably. It has more features, though. It probably can go about as fast. Yeah, probably about the same speed. Yeah.